What's up and welcome to Idle Insights, a show where each week I, Trevor Best, talk to interesting people about idle champions and Dungeons and Dragons. And with me this week is returning guest V Muse. Hello. Hello. And I hope everyone can hear because I'm producing. We're live. It's all me. If anything goes wrong, yell at me. Uh, <laughs> v, how are you doing today? Michael. I'm doing good. Um, Hemingway is also enjoying himself. Yes, apparently. He, he's. He, I think he's making some biscuits back Make there. Biscuits. Yeah, the bakery is he open. Wants biscuits. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're we're here today to honestly just have some fun and talk about character yeah. creation. Um, Love it. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I don't really know where I was going with that, other than like, yeah. Let's. V, where do you start when you want to make a character? I start with sort of what, well, okay. We're talking about like writing a book or a story. Normally I start with sort of like the, the main character because mm -hmm. that's sort of a given. But if we are talking about uh, characters for like tabletop games, mm. um, usually it's what kind of role I need that character to fill and then build off of that. Okay. So it's like, um, you know, if I know I need to have a character who's sort of like a meet and greet, I will sort of think about, okay, well, what what type of person would this be like? You know, what kind of personality would they have? And then it just sort of like slowly builds on itself as to how I want to start working on that character and everything like that. So, it, you know, role in the game definitely and, guides. And I, I kind of want to clarify there. So when you say role, are you're talking about like the more of like leader, healer, striker kind of thing, not specifically class. Yes, okay. exactly. It's not class. Like, honestly, that doesn't even come into play yet. It's sort of like, okay, this person's going to be the um, chatterbox of the group, or this person's going to be the um, quiet and sullen one in the group, but, you okay. know, sees everything. Like, kind of go off of that um, interaction. Or if it's an NPC, literally, this one's going to be like a jovial tavern keep. Mm -hmm. And that helps me kind of pull it together, depending on, you know, whether it's an NPC or a PC. Mm -hmm. So you, you do the role and uh, kind of come up with the character personality or thing. Is that when you move into, like, the mechanical part of it? Like, you're, you're picking, like, a, a you're looking at the book for race or stuff like that? No? No. No. Honestly, like... Once I get the character, then I start building um, sort of their their story, especially like um, their voice, like how they would interact with others and how they would speak and talk. Oh, and, interesting. Um, respond to questions and how they would react to situations. Um, I get that going next. And then I'm like, okay, so I have this particular role with this particular personality. What then makes sense to attach to you know, race, class, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So that actually all comes later on down the line. I have a better sense of the character as a whole and then add in the nitty gritty details before like, I'm going to play a cleric who is a tabaxi. Like that, that comes later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, real quick, I want you to clear something up for chat. Uh, I'm just, I'm hosting and producing. We still have our amazing uh, mod Gabe, who is uh, in the yes. chat, uh, doing doing the 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 awesome work. Uh, so the, the the giveaway will still happen in the middle of the show. Yes. Uh, I will not have to pause anything to do it. Uh, <laughs> Gabe put a, Gabe put an emoji of a cat with sunglasses, and that is I love it. That's fantastic. That's perfection. Well played. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, well it's still gonna be a normal show and everything. You could still put question uh, questions in the chat if you have questions about character creation. Uh, we also are probably gonna be maybe making a character later, so you can uh, get some uh, uh, of your thoughts in there for what that character is gonna look like. Okay, so that that is that is interesting because like I definitely How do you do it. As I want to know, yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing is that like definitely the things that you're saying there are things that I do. It's just a different order. Uh, okay, so what's your order of operation? So. I, my, my order is usually like my wife and I very much have this thing where like when we are in a group and people are talking about making characters, we're like, okay, what does the group need? We're, we're, we're like, we're always like, we we're very much the kind of people that are like, we want everybody to make the thing that they want to make and we'll make something that helps the group out that it's missing. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is why we so often play healers. Um. <laughs> healers are fun, though. I kind of end up defaulting to some type of healer, I've discovered. Like, 
I yeah I I, I it's really funny because I didn't really realize until like last night how much I just kind of enjoy being a healer overall. My friends and I decided that we are going to do a World of Warcraft group for a little while. Like Ooh. we I've never played with a group before, and my friends are finally mm -hmm. like, let's play together. I'm like, yes. And I did a healer role, and everyone's like, oh, Trevor, are you doing okay over there? I know I know it sucks. I'm like, no, I'm having so much fun. I love doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like I'm in my element. Please yeah. give more. So, so like I'll I'll usually like that's kind of the role thing that I will come up with first is like mm -hmm. okay, it, do they need someone who's up front taking hits? Do they need someone who's being sneaky? Do they need someone that's healing? Do they need somebody that's wiggling the fingers? Um, and is that a bard or a magician? <laughs> uh, it, 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 any of them, really. Uh, well, actually, one time I did make a bard who was a stage magician. So Love he it. was the great El Magnifico. Um, Perfection. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll do that and then kind of start forming uh, a character that I like fitting that role. And so it will just kind of be like, just finding interesting things that I could pull in to kind of describe mm -hmm. this character, maybe in like a few sentences. Um, like, well, the, the one that threw me for a loop was actually the last time I uh, the last time I made a character with my group was because everyone was like, no, uh, we want you to make whatever. We're not going to tell you what we're going to make. We oh, want you to God. make what you want. And so they took away your... and I was like, no, my safety blanket. And so I made a ranger and m the things that I was thinking, I'm like, OK, this is a ranger. We have it set that we are uh, recent graduates of an adventuring academy. What do I find interest? What kind of character would I find interesting there? Oh, one that comes from a famous adventuring parent. And okay. so then I'll just start kind of building from there of like what I, you know, what I wanted her to do, what I, uh, mm -hmm. what I thought would be fun for her. Then I pulled in because I was working on Idol Champions at the time we were doing Light of Xerxes. I'm like, oh, what if she's Zadali's daughter? And so uh, I was pulling all of these things together. And then I went to class and everything <laughs> um and that when i get there that's probably the part that i slow down the hardest on because i'm like mm -hmm. okay what, what subclass do i do i don't know what to, oh, i know i wanted to pick on these things <laughs> yeah. see that's why i get lost in the weeds like once it's like once i get into even when it comes to like you know do i want to be an elf do i want to be a tabaxi do i want to be a you know what have you mm -hmm. um yeah that's where like honestly the hardest thing for me was i was playing a turn of fortunes wheel campaign and dm wanted us to create three characters obviously you know the mm. whole glitch thing what happened yeah you. that was the hardest thing to come up with the other two characters yeah because i had the one already established okay it's 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 phoenix that little character i played on one of our one shots here um but after that i was like what else could phoenix be Mm -hmm. because to me she's this adorable little owl and like that's just who she is um <laughs> but thank god for the nexus feature because that's what got me through i'm like wait her nexus feature she's allergic to feathers and i know we talked about this on paint and slay but for other mm -hmm. people who haven't seen that episode um so that's what helped me with creating the other two characters i'm like who else has feathers <laughs> <laughs> that's fair have to have feathers. that's fair yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the, the the last form is just the strongest form, no feathers. <laughs> but anytime they're in a fight with someone with feathers, we're gonna hit so. Oh, that's a good idea. Watch out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that... make my yawn too, so it's like they have scales. So there's no yes. chance of that. That's funny. Uh, yeah the 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 process of making a character is it, that is always the fun part for me and. But I will say that I think one of the things that's the most fun for me is uh, the backstory. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's probably because of some, you know, writing background and whatnot. Uh, like, li like literally on Tuesday we were playing. I was going to pull it up, but I don't want to open Chrome and destroy the entire stream. Um, I... I was on my character sheet and I was clicking around on the tabs because ADHD and I hit uh, one of them and I <laughs> I forgot that I had written a 1200 word backstory <laughs> and it was all right there <laughs> and I was reading I'm like oh wow I forgot about a lot of this <laughs> Check. <laughs> do, do, do you enjoy like uh, do, do you oh actually that's a better question do you write mm. out your backstories 
depends on the character I'm doing. Like, quite frankly, when it comes to one shot characters, I don't really get into high details. Yeah. It's more like I have like a bullet point list of like, okay, it's it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this. Just to kind of help me throw out one liners and keep a reference point for how this character would function. Because I do use backstory as impetus for choices and decisions the character would make. Mm-hmm. Um, but y'all, like Voronika's backstory... Yeah. Like, oh, I bet that's a novel. <laughs> not wrong. I mean, that sucker is substantial and it's not all on paper is the other problem. Like it's living in my head of a good majority of it. Mm-hmm. Um, And Black Dice Society, I think we touched like maybe like 10% of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, But more of it came about with uh, running D&D in, D- in a castle last summer. Um, mm. because it did feature her and her domain um, for the campaign. Um, so that was fun to be able to like play into that more and have more of that come around. But there's still so much that has not been revealed about her. And I don't think I will reveal it because oh, I'd yeah. like to keep that in my back pocket for as I play oh, games yeah. with people and be like, wait a minute, I knew about this, but I didn't know about this. Like, what the heck in the heck? Um, but I, yeah, I no, like I have stuff. backstories. I have backstories for so many characters. And the funny thing is, is a friend called me out on this. So like, you know, V, you have a lot of characters who are somehow connected to Baba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to pull out a, a few uh, question here, yeah. uh, which was uh, Star Chaser 43 said question. How long are character backstories? You give the DM the entire backstory. Um. For me, at least, it varies. Yeah. Um, I do uh, one of one of uh, game that I played in. Uh, my DM asked for a backstory, and I showed up to his house the next week with four pages of single spaced uh, <laughs> font and everything, and uh, handed that to him. Uh, and uh, what was really cool, like the thing about that is, I I do, I will give a DM my the backstory anytime they want. And I will give them all of the dirty little secrets and everything in there too. <laughs> oh my God. That was one of the most adorable things I've ever seen happen. If y'all are not on the tab and just listen to this, you just missed the most adorable dang thing of all time. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I will give them everything uh, for that character mm-hmm. because Again, when I'm doing games and stuff, like it is a collaborative storytelling. I want them to be able to take anything that they want from there and add to it or whatnot. So, right. um, yeah, it, I will give them the entire backstory if they want it. If they don't, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tend to, um, what's interesting is I deal with a lot of DMs who don't necessarily want the full backstory. They're like, just yeah. give me the overview or the bullet points. Yeah. Um, so I have some far more detailed backstory documents floating around. That even the DM hasn't seen, but it's like, I'll go through and I'll pull like, you know, the really good points and highlights that I think would be helpful for the DM to have for mm-hmm. the campaign, for the story and everything like that. Um, but yeah. Um, then I've also like done the fun thing of like, in a game I'm playing currently right now, um, she has amnesia. Like, oh, yes. she she is friends with this other player's character. Like they met each other on the edge of El Terrell type of thing. Um, she truly has no memory outside of like waking up near the, uh, crater and having a notebook on her. Mm. That's it. So it was, and it's been kind of cool to see it all pan out. And I've done this before in the past. What's interesting is like, for some reason, the DMs all tend to go towards this like clone motif, which I find hysterical, <laughs> um, to explain How, the amnesia. They all talking to Todd? Like, <laughs> yeah, so like what? Um, But yeah, no, honestly, like that has been a fun character creation in motion because she is this character who doesn't have a memory because I don't have all those details built into my head. So it's more of an improv character for me, which honestly is sometimes a great thing to be able to do because it keeps things fresh and it keeps me more on my toes as to what I want to do with that character as opposed to falling back on the oh you know I have like the old grandmotherly type who's just going to be there and be like saucy but totally helpful and you know everyone wants to get a hug by the time we're done playing um so yeah it's one Mm -hmm. of those things where uh you know I like to change it up a little bit I I will say that I do think that is some 
that is some really big fun that could happen at a table when a player is just like, I don't know, do what you want with the character's mm-hmm. backstory. I, I've had I've had that presented to me, and that has literally been like, this is a gift, and I thank you so much, and this is going to be so much fun. Um, <laughs> one of and those the best part is she's a she's a changeling druid. Oh god! So yes. she's just constantly changing. <laughs> I like. love that. Uh, what one of mine? Uh, the player was uh, in a Curse of Strahd game, and that was so much fun to like uh, come up with and then reveal. And wa- watching her would be like, "Oh, oh, oh!" It was it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I love. I the yeah. thing is though, is I do think that is definitely a brave thing to do. Like I I definitely haven't done that myself, but I do want I do want to do that. Where I'm just like I don't know. The, the, you you decide what happened in this character's yeah. backstory in connection to the story, um, yeah, but uh, I, I I don't I, I'm too too scared. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like I said, those are those are normally the exception to the rule because quite frankly, I love I love sitting there and starting to plot out like a character concept because it's it's the whole process of telling a story and just you know building something and bringing it to life type of thing. So okay, but that's sort of my jam. Yeah. Um, well, do you want to make a character? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Make a character. Where Where do you want to start with this? I want to start with a comment from the chat already. Oh, yeah? What Someone putting on t Bard scales for day. <laughs> All right. You on t Bard it is. <laughs> we have to. We have to. I, I totally missed um forgive me. I missed the name next to it. But I'll, I'll go back and look. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. Oh so, yeah. that's very good. Oh okay. yeah, it was lurking writer. <laughs> there we go. Well played. I'm like, I'm sorry, that is just way too much fun. Okay, so here's what I do. <laughs> when it comes to names, I actually go to um Google. And I start typing out aspects of the personality um, to sort of come up with a name hmm. for the character. So I think it'd be fun if chat kind of puts in what kind of um, personality oh. would a Yonti bard have? And that way we can get a name going. Okay. Yeah. Chat, g- give us the personality yeah. of this Yonti bard. I will say that everyone that talks about how they name characters in, in books and everything that, I, uh, that I've that i talked with folks about, it always just makes me feel like a caveman. Because <laughs> you want to know what I do? I sit Why here. What? I stare at my keyboard and I pick letters and I make sounds in my head that those letters sound cool with. And then I just okay. sh- cram them together. <laughs> I have done that since high school and never changed. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that, though. Uh, okay. Let's see. So uh, someone said uh, hyperactive. Uh-huh. Uh, slippery. <laughs> slippery. That's less personality and more yeah. physicality. Um, let's see. Haughty, but not rude. Pun loving extrovert. Oh, I kind of like it. Let's go with extrovert first. Okay. Let's try extrovert. That's fun. Um, okay. So I'm going to jump in and I go to like just a random language. You know what? I'm going to do. It looks fun here. Let's go Danish. I was Ooh. just watching a video with someone who was Danish. Okay. So Udad, Udad Vint is what comes up for extrovert. Okay. Um, that sounds very much like a last name. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to copy it. And... Yeah. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to put it in the chat. Oh, okay, yeah, this yeah. This is what the word looks like. That to me reads like a last name. Yeah? Yeah. I think what I'm going to do, though, and this is this is the other thing I do. What I'm going to do is turn that E into a Y to give it more of a fantasy feel. <laughs> and... I'm thinking double up the U in the front. Oh, see, I was gonna go. I was gonna go with the 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 staple of fantasy, putting a, uh, an apostrophe between the U and the D. Oh, I like that better. Okay, all right. So we have our last name. <laughs> Looking right at no wandering apostrophes. <laughs> I like them. Uh. So the last name chat looks like this now. Okay, so that's our last name. It's a pretty cool one. 
That's fun. That's fun. Um, what else could we put in there? <laughs> Uh, what? Uh, Luxunam uh, says, uh, I can see the puns of who are you? And the answer will be you, dad. Because it, the, <laughs> it's U D A D is the first. <laughs> That's good. Uh, okay. So, um, okay. So we have the last name. Yep. Let's think of something for the first name. So, if there's any other personality descriptions from chat. Rough Rider, I I I I know that uh that showing the screen on the D and D Beyond would be great. Um, again, I'm producing and I don't have the setup for that. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> we also agreed that V was doing the D and D Beyond and not me, so that I didn't have to have because another Chrome OBS tab open. <laughs> oh, let's see here. So so we so her so the personality Explore is is kind of fun. Uh, is extrovert. Extroverts uh, less was what the last name means. What is something that could be put before that? Um, For a bard. Uh, <laughs> I kind of want to say aggressively extrovert. Uh, <laughs> um, no, there's a better one there. Um, actually, you know what? I kind of want to do courageous extrovert. I just like the sound courageous. of those. Yeah, so try do courageous. Let's see what we can find. Courageous. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I kept it to Danish and it's Modig. Modig? Mm. Yeah. M O D I G. Which. And she could be Mo for short. I was thinking Modi. M O D I. Just drop the G. Ooh. Modi. Ooh. Ooh. I almost think I want the G though because you have that U following it because then it turns into the two vowels smooshing together. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I like that. Okay. I like that. Okay. So we're going with Modig Udavit. Nice. Very nice. Okay. So continuing on, we already know we're going to do Yonti, which I have to keep scrolling. Holy <laughs> moly. <laughs> Doopa doo, doopa doo. Yeah, we'll choose this race. Okay, so how we have a size choice here. Oh, so right. small or medium? So that's another good question. Okay, so okay, this is where we could have fun with it. So we're looking at a bard. Yeah. Do we want to do like little body, big personality type of trope? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, or what? you know. I kind of want to go normal on it just because, like, I feel like uh, if we have a small Yuanti, there's I don't know. I like the I like the the, the medium sized one. Medium, okay. Yeah. So we'll go with medium, and then serpentine spellcasting. Okay, so we know the poison spray, hand trip. Can cast animal friendship. Do, 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 do. So by default, uh, when we want to choose our spell casting ability, I think we're going to be leaning towards probably charisma. Yeah, probably. Because we're dealing with a bardy bard. Bardy bard. Bardy bardy bard. Okay. And we know we're doing a bard. Which you brings want... us to the next question. Uh, hmm? Why don't we do a third level one three. so hmm? we can uh, pick the the college and stuff yeah that's three right level three yeah. for bards yeah all right so we're gonna bump that up okay chat i i i, I want i want y'all with your your D, D knowledge what what college do you see yeah. uh this yuanti bard uh who's who's a courageous extrovert going into because yeah. i mean it's so you know what's you know what's sad for me about some of the subclasses is that some of them get just get put into like oh well you know there's always this one and it's just because it came from the PHB that's it like Valor is a great subclass and and oh, works with a lot cool. of stuff yeah. uh, but I know a lot of people are like oh yeah you know that one's from mm. 2015 Valor is great when you multiclass that bard with a ranger and oh boy oh oh I've never thought works of that out nicely works out quite she's like one of my strongest characters it's ridiculous um 
didn't expect that, but yeah, just a little tip. Mm. Multi-class bard and ranger together. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, so uh, the lucky writer says musical theater or whatever official college is closest. <laughs> okay, so let's let's let me. Rah, 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 rah. So we have College of Creation, College of Glamour, College of Lore, College of Spirits, College of Swords, College of Valor, College of Whispers, and then we have College of Eloquence. Eloquence. Eloquence, darling. Yes. Um. I have. Mm, for some reason, I'm kind of drawn to glamour because I always think about like you know how like snake charmers and stuff. Mm, true. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Mycroft Jones says glamour whispers. Yeah. Glamour's pretty good. Glamour's feeling kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. There's another for glamour. Okay. Dranaka is also saying glamour. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking glamour is the winner here. All right. So let's go with glamma. All right. It's glamour bard. Glam bard. Glam bard. And now we have a skill to choose. <laughs> Rough Rider says, question, will this be our next evergreen champ? No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I did mean to say that earlier. This is not a promise that this character will this ever not... show up in Idle Champions. Uh, there is a lot more that goes into when we need a CD original than this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and we have uh for proficiencies. I can speak pretty. Oh, proficiencies. Proficiencies. Yeah. Mm. All right. So musical instrument. Oh. We get two options. Um, I mean, I think it's hilarious to have a, a Yuan team. Bird that... pipes. What did you say? There's bird pipes. I'm sorry. Oh. I just saw bird. Well, see, pipes. I was laughing because I was gonna say I think a Yuan team should play the bagpipes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's how they always get the center of attention. Um. <laughs> Lurking writer, all the instruments. Piano. The instruments. <laughs> a hurdy gurdy. Oh, I, wish Ooh, I do love me a hurdy gurdy. Hurdy gurdy. I can say it. Oh, no. Option. Didn't you have like a wood uh, mm -hmm. wood kit that made yeah. a hurdy gurdy? Yeah. Yep. I'm yep. It's thing. sitting in my dining room. <laughs> 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 okay. So we have bagpipes, bird pipes, drum, dulcimer, flute, glower, hand drum, horn, longhorn, lute, lyre, lyre, sorry. Pan flute, schwamm, songhorn, tantan, uh, thalar, talkin, viol, wargong, yarting, and zulkun. I know some of those Not words. Not sure what some of these are. Yeah, I know some of those words. Cowbell <laughs> needs more cowbells as noodles. Ah, <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I like the hurdy gurdy. I think bagpipes. Uh, bagpipes. I'm, I mean, I'm down for that. I'm here for the bagpipes. That's fun. Um, that would be fun to do sort of a flute mm. nod again to like the snake charmer stuff. It's true. But. I also kind of just want to do a yarting. I have no idea what a yarting is, but a yarting, yon um, a yanti playing a yarting. I just want Susie. <laughs> I, I need to know what this is. Uh, oh, it is. This is a Forgotten Realms thing, I guess. A yarting is Ooh. a stringed instrument similar to a guitar uh, commonly found in Om. Oh, so it's a guitar. It's a guitar. It's a okay. guitar. Uh, what are those little wooden clam like instruments called? Castanets? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Um so so what 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 did we settle on for for instrument? Uh so far we have bagpipes. I think I'm gonna go. Yeah, let's do a pan flute. Okay. Pan pan. Ooh, I do like a yeah. pan flute. Yeah. I think that's cool. Oh, we got a third musical instrument. My God, hold Jeez. on. Jeez. Let's do the yarting then. Um, that thing's cool. Yarting. Yeah. Okay, we'll do we'll do a yanti playing a yarting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so now we have skills <clears throat> that we get to choose. There's acrobatics, animal handling, arcana, athletics, deception, history, insight, intimidation, investigation, medicine, nature, perception, performance, persuasion, religion, sleight of hand, stealth, survival. Good yeah. lord. Um, definitely think performance needs to be in there. Yeah, so we default performance. Uh, how many of these do we get? Three. Three. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. I'm I, I always default to Arcana, but like I feel like that's I don't know. 
Because, yeah, when I'm doing a Maybe. bard, usually it's like arcana, performance, and persuasion or deception. Persuasion. Yeah, I was going to say persuasion might be a good one. Oh, uh, Lurking Rider suggests survival. That could actually survival. be interesting. That could be cool. All right, so we'll put in survival. Oh, and hey, uh, our awesome- uh, I will survive. Oh, my God. The song. I will survive. I will survive. <laughs> uh, okay. I will say, uh, while you're uh, plugging those in, uh, Gabe just told me that the giveaway is ready. Uh, so uh, keep an eye on chat for the keyword that Gabe's going to put in there. Uh, put it in the chat and enter for a chance to win 42 chests of your choice, excluding Bahamut chests. Um, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. There we go. All right, so we have one more. Uh, the keyword's creating. Mm, I like that one, Gabe. Well done. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing acrobatics. Popping up. Well, now we have creating. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do. I like acrobatics. I do. I think that's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe, maybe they were a circus performer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. acrobatics. That, that I was. Like it. A, I like it. I like it. My sister's first character was a bard who grew up in a circus. Sweet. Oh, so now we can be expertise in two of these. Looks like. So I think performance, yeah, for sure. And Let's do acrobatics. Acrobatics, yeah, I like that. Okay, very cool, very cool, very cool. All right, so then we're gonna have the mantle of inspiration because of College of Glamour. Mm -hmm. Gain the ability to weave a song of fey magic that imbues your your allies with vigor and speed. So it's like a fight song. Fight song. Oh man. <laughs> that um uh, that might be the most obnoxious thing I've ever thought of. <laughs> that uh whoo <laughs> It's a fight song though. Just a fight song. <laughs> I don't know why that just struck me so funny, but I'm picturing this snake like person playing the bagpipe. Oh, yeah. Like this. Go fight win. <laughs> Go fight win. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. So we have that going on. And we also will have enthralling performance. Let's see here. You can charge your performance with seductive fey magic. Oh, oh, so you go from like go fight win to like, you know, careless whispers. <laughs> dee 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 dee. Oh man. Now I wish the saxophone was an option for proficiency. Uh <laughs> well the, on, on 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 the um what is it called? The the Y instrument. The um, Oh oh the Yarting. Yarting, yes. That, that can be played on the Yarting. There you go, there you go. I like that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> this is so fantastically ridiculous. Um, you can if you can attempt to inspire wonder in your audience by singing, reciting a poem, or dancing. At the end of the performance, choose a number of humanoids within sixty feet of you who watched and listened to all of it. More power to them. Yep. Um each target must receive a wisdom saving throw against your spell or save or be charmed by you. Oh, that's so perfect. That totally ties into like the, you know, the whole yeah. snake, snake charmer thing. I like yeah. it. I like it. Okay. Now the fun thing is, is when all of this is said and done, is will I have like an actual voice for this character? <laughs> I might. I might. Okay. So I think ability scores is what we have going on next. So, Let's do standard array for the sake of. Not a bunch of things just <laughs> fell. That's not what happened. That, um, no, that, what, that's here, it's here. The the. the Here's a question: Do do we want to mm. curse this character with me rolling the ability scores, uh, or <laughs> I was just gonna do standard array? But oh, you know okay, what? So how do you how do you roll it up? What's your normal rolling? It oh, up my roll? usual roll is uh, uh, four d sixes drop the lowest. Okay, cool. Uh, it, Let's do it. If now I will say if I want players to have a little bit of a more powerful character, I'll have re-roll ones. I will throw it into for like the, um, like if it's like, like I did that for D&D and &D a castle, cause I'm like, I'm sorry, this was still like an epic type of experience. Yeah. Make an epic character. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, we, we, we like Modig. We're, we're gonna give her re-roll okay. on one. So 
do we want to do this like just straight across? Like this is rolling for strength right now. What comes up is what comes up. Oh, I mean, normally that no, but right now, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Okay. All right, we're we're doing this let's in do order, chat. Oh no, I dropped the d6. Ah. Doesn't count. Reroll. <laughs> it doesn't because it's carpeted floor and it was cocked. All right, let's see. First one. I'm gonna reroll that. Okay, so that is twelve for strength. 12. Okay. Got a uh, six and two threes there. Nice. Let's see. Dexterity is next. Oh, thank God I said reroll ones. <laughs> okay. That is also 12. <laughs> Ooh, two fives consistent. and a two. Cool. Now we're looking at constitution. Okay. 14. She, Ooh. she, she Ooh. got some health. She got some definite help. Okay. Right. Uh, get the ASMR dice shaking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what is this one for? Intelligence. Ooh. Um, well, that's uh, a nine. <laughs> a nine. Well, that's a story that's being told through that there one. Go. There you go. Okay. Now we're doing wisdom. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Well, she's wise. Uh, that is nice. 17. Wow. Wisdomous. And finally, the important one, charisma. Oh, boy. <laughs> Come on. Go back and shuffle the... Uh... Okay. Reroll this one. There we go. Uh, that is 16. That's not too shabby. That's not too shabby. Okay. All right, cool, 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 cool. So now... I, I love how when I'm like, oh, yeah, when I want my players to be more powerful, I'll let them roll real ones. For me, that's just kind of an average roll. Uh <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So uh, with the ability score increases stuff, I'm going to opt for the two, one uh, divide up because we have one single odd yeah. number. And then... Actually, hold on. Let me check here. We have two odd numbers. So... Hmm. You know what I'm realizing is mm. because we rolled so high on wisdom, we could actually do the multi-class into ranger on this one. Good. Yeah. Be interesting. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that won't be a, a later thing, but there's an option there that for be, that. Yeah, there's an option. That option does come into play now because of that. Um, okay, so the intelligence is going to sit nicely at a nine <laughs> if we don't do anything to it. <laughs> yeah, I think we're um, good. <laughs> Wisdom, obviously, with that 17, we're sitting pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. Dexterity. Doo -doo -doo. That could probably go up a little bit. Yeah. So then let's, what if we do like a um, two to dexterity and the plus one to the intelligence? You want to do that? Two to dexterity and one to which one? The intelligence, because that's the one that's like the lowest. Um. Yeah, because raising the dex wouldn't. Yeah. Well, raising the decks will put it up to. Because that'll put it up to. 30. No, it'll pop it up. It'll pop it up a full. It'll take it oh, yeah. from a 12 to a 14. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I meant like adding the plus one to the decks. Keeping the two on the charisma, putting the one on the decks. Oh, okay. So then not the intelligence one. So two yeah. on charisma and one on the decks. But see, that's what I'm thinking. Instead of the dex getting the one, let's put the dex in, or the uh, one into the intelligence because then at least you won't have a minus one to your rolls. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, uh, person chat. Uh, the the halo, fit halo, PhD halo. I'm saying that. Uh, what's oh. this uh, plus two plus one thing? Uh, is that something new? So yeah. Um, originally, uh, it was that you the. Uh, pluses to your ability scores would come from the race right. that you picked, uh, which is like not great. I even had a podcast episode like five years ago talking about how it just didn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, and now you just get to pick uh, where the bonuses go because you know what? You could be a, a dwarf that studied uh, rigorously about magic and has a plus to intelligence. So yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, Thalo. Oh. Hi, baby girl. Um, I like it. Okay, so cool. So we're ultimately ending up with a total score for strength at 12, total score of dexterity at 12, 
Constitution's at 14, Intelligence at 10, Wisdom at 17, and Charisma at 18. It's actually pretty good for a bard. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. I'm liking this. Oh, hi, little girl. Um, <laughs> language alls. Choose a language besides common that we want to do. Mm, I like the idea that this Yuanti bard who uh, worked at a circus worked in a gnomish circus. Oh, interesting. And so, it, like, it's it's a it's a circus that's like all a bunch of like, it's very steampunky and everything. Uh -huh. Maybe that's why the bagpipes uh, uh, came Maybe. in there. Um, okay. And uh, so I think Gnomish should definitely be one of the languages. Okay. So we have Gnomish. Now, what about background? Ooh, yeah. I always forget about background. <laughs> Every oh, time. So um, well, there, what's the... There's a very barred one in there. Actor, I think it is, or... Entertainer, that's the one. Entertainer. Yes, there is entertainer. So we could just go straight up entertainer. That's you I have a cat here on my sorry. You thrive in a front you thrive in front of an audience, you know how to entertain them, entertain them, how to entrance them, entertain them, and even inspire them. Your poetics can stir the hearts of those who hear you awakening grief or joy, laughter or anger. Your music raises their spirits or captures their sorrow, your dance steps captivate, your humor cuts to the quick, whatever techniques you use, your art is your life. So that would that would bardy up the bard for sure. Yeah, yeah. But we could do some uh, some interesting things here. Of like maybe she was a charlatan and was like uh, doing some uh, you know shady stuff uh, on the side right. that the circus didn't know about. Uh, we do have because do we put survival as one of the um, we did. proficiencies? <laughs> Yeah. There could be something that like um, a background that was before the circus or maybe mm -hmm. in between that was more of like the outlander or something like that. Yeah. Because like I, 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 I know that there are backgrounds. There's like very much like, yes, this is the this is the background that is meant to go with this class. And I always like messing with that. What about a mercenary veteran then? Oh. Cell sword who fought battles for coin. You're well acquainted with risking life and limb for a chance at shared treasure. Sorry, I just someone said a snake oil salesman. Someone said you watched Fallout. That made me laugh really hard. <laughs> um, really good. Very on topic. Um, yeah. That's an interesting one. That they that they were a mercenary veteran that then joined a circus. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be like, I want something completely different. A circus. Right. And now they're out adventuring where they want to do like a mixture of both. They want to entertain, but they also want yeah, to. Oh, they want to go back. They kind of want to get back into the fight. Ooh. Yeah. I like that. Let's do mercenary veteran. I like veteran. this. Okay. Mercenary veteran it is. Fun. <laughs> okay. So with that, we get a gaming set. Ooh. So dice set, dragon chess, playing card, or three dragon ante. Uh, chat what what uh what what kind of uh game set does uh does this Yuanti play when uh she needs some extra gold I always do like three dragon ante that was that, that was a fun mm. one yeah yeah there, there's there, that's one for yeah, see? yeah yeah there's one for three dragon dice sets fun though I, dice sets always just funny to have on a D &D it's sheet. just it it's very meta <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, dice set that oh. where you roll snake eyes. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I do like, like that. that. Yeah, I actually okay. I actually feel yeah. like I'm sold on that one because of that. Yep, that that okay. Yep. There we go. Yep, there we go. Okay, so snakes and ladders. <laughs> Let's keep going then. So now we have inventory. Ah, uh, we could just use the the starting stuff. We can I just feel use, like we yeah. go through that starting one. Starting equipment. Yeah, agreed. 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 So let's just. But would they have a rapier, long sword, or a simple weapon? Oh. I'm kind of thinking rapier because it's very like you know, like snake tooth esque yeah. puncturing. But I. W no, yeah. Let's go with that one. I like that one. Okay. Diplomat or entertainer? Entertainer. Oh, for the packs. Yeah. Yeah, entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
How many more musical instruments does this person need? Um, a lute or any other musical instrument. I want to put a hurdy-gurdy in. <laughs> well, I think this I is really just what do. they have on them, not what they're proficient in. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm going to just put a hand drum for switching it up a little bit. And now everyone in, that's here in chat and maybe watching later on YouTube will know if I ever mentioned a yarting in uh, uh, Isle Champions Adventure, exactly. you know why. This is where it came from. <laughs> this is where I got it from this. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I will say, like, like chat, you may have noticed that, like, what we did here is different from the methods that we were talking about at the beginning of the show. That's because, yeah, yeah we're building the character on a show. Um, but, like, I think you can see like how when we're building a character, we are thinking of ways of changing things up that is not like we're not specifically sitting here talking about like, oh, well, you know, this will be good for a bard to get those stats. Like when it came to the attributes. So yeah, of course. But yeah. like uh, when I'm, I I think one of the things, though, n number one for me when I'm making a character for D&D &D is I'm not really thinking about mechanics ever. I'm thinking about the, the 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 character and what their backstory is and what they can bring to this current story. Um, that's not just like in this, it's like it's not just a bard. It's it's not just a, a it's not just a snake yeah. bard. This is a, a Yuanti bard who was a, uh, a mercenary veteran that joined a circus it's to get away it. from things, found a new appreciation for things. And went on an adventure. Like, what if they were wanted? And that was a whole thing for joining the circus. Like, you know, there was a bounty on their head. They joined the circus so they could learn. And tying yeah. into the bard, like, the whole, like, being able to disguise themselves and taking on a different personality. Like, hiding in plain sight almost. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> hiding in plain sight at a gnomish circus. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but, no. like, that, that's where, that's where I, I start pulling threads for the backstory when it when it's building a character it's like okay let, let's get the reasons why this character is here i, I love it uh yeah. we, we we actually have uh, a couple unanswered questions here uh so let's go okay. through those before we wrap things up cassie's 335 says question how often do either of you indulge in making a custom class or subclass any particular favorites you've made um have i done custom class or subclass I don't know if I've actually done that with PCs, like with NPCs. I've definitely kind of taken a class and tweaked it slightly. Yeah, because yeah, you did that with Voronika. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. duh. Yeah. Yeah. Circle a dream to circle a nightmare. Hello. Yeah. But like. So I, just like it, yeah. But like you said, like you took it and you tweaked it a little bit. Not like yeah. specifically going from scratch on anything. Yeah. Yeah. Which exactly. I. That is kind of my preferred way of doing it. Because I will tell you this. No, I've never done this. I'm yeah. I because the, the thing is for me is like I'm not a game designer and I don't think that I have the necessary skills to make something balanced in either direction. Like yeah. there there is a heavy chance that it is either gonna be completely underpowered or completely overpowered. I don't think mm -hmm. I have the necessary skills to hit that sweet spot. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely fair. Uh, lurking writer uh, says, "Question V: Have you ever in uh, have you ever been inspired to create a character because of a mini you've painted or wanted to paint?" So is this uh, art imitating character creation or character <laughs> creation imitating uh, art? Pretty much. Um, actually, yes. Okay, let me grab them. So oh. there is this bust that I got of um this beautiful furball oh yeah fellow. um so this is giuseppe okay so i got giuseppe and i started painting giuseppe and giuseppe once i finished him up actually worked himself into the backstory of the jameson sisters so if you ever watch d4 i play patty jameson this furball cleric on d4 is a special um character and she has two other sisters um what were their names again i'm trying to remember uh, it was Maggie and Kathy, maybe. They're triplets. Mm. Okay. Um, and Giuseppe is one of their fathers. And he's just got this really sweet sort of sad, tired look to him. Like, oh, he's Papa Giuseppe. Like, he is the father of the Jameson triplets. I love um, that. So, yeah. This 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 was a mini that came into my life without any connection. And once I finished painting him, I'm absolutely like, no, you're you're now connected to a storyline for my characters. 
So yeah. I love that. Uh, let's see. Last question. Cassius three three five says, uh, "Question: Which of you would play uh, Modig in a live stream? Well, V obviously." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fantastic, darling. <laughs> yes, I love it. She's got her voice. It's a bit Zsa Zsa Gabor with a lisp. I kind of love it. Uh, and I kind of love the idea that she had that before the circus. And so she's just a mercenary with style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, we got we got to wrap things up. So, uh, uh, oh wait, no, we, we don't have another show after this one. Well, we still got to no. wrap things up uh, for timing yeah. and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I did, I did actually joke this week during me. I'm like, all right, two hours of curating a character with V. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh but we we got meetings and stuff to go to yeah. uh v thank you so much for uh sitting down with me and making a character make a modig yes i'm honestly like i'm kind of liking modig i'll have to um keep modig like starred okay before we really we were talking oh, about this right. before we started <laughs> so so Trevor and I were chatting about, you know, our D&D Beyond characters and all that stuff. And Trevor, you said the number you had. And I'm like, dang, well, I can't speak anymore because mine was just two less than yours. So how many characters do you have on D&D Beyond? So even though I, I went on record on an episode of this show saying, like, I never just make characters to make them. And that is true. Despite that, I have 75 <laughs> characters on my D&D Beyond account. <laughs> And I officially now have 74. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, V, if people want to find you and what you do on the interwebs, where can they do so? Basically go to any social media app and type in V Muse. There's really not that many out there. And it's either V Muse with an underscore thrown in there somewhere or V Muse just smooshed together without the apostrophe. Uh, that you know, that is the good thing of uh, of of uh, having the brand across the the internet. <laughs> uh, all right, well that's gonna do it for this week's episode. V, what's good? Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed our conversation on character creation and the creation of Modig. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this week's episode of Yee. Island Sites. So until next week, take care of yourself. Bye. Now and I thanks, to, Gabe. Now I have to sit here and make sure I'm hitting the right button. All right.